you know, the more that we can create common underlying infrastructure, the better. And from an and from a just a, a, a practical basis, why why build dozens of different proprietary versions of the same underlying core technical needs that shouldn't be the basis of competition? That's wildly inefficient. It's wildly ineffective. It's massive redundant spend. Why not build it once together in, in an open source manner and then focus that? actual innovation investment where it counts. I'll tell you, there is a hesitation coming into the open source world, um, especially because we've been so used to um, Microsofts and you know companies that have built software that are enclosed to software. So you have any problem, you have a centralized entity that you reach out to for issue resolution. So the concern with open source is typically, who do I you know reach out to and who will solve my problem if I have a problem? But then the community is so close-knit, you know, in spite of being open source and so powerful. Um, so it, all it takes is, you know, to you have to let go and reach out to the community and you'll feel like this is, the, the network is so much more responsive and so much more valuable and so much more knowledgeable in the, in the space. I think the value I, I see in being a part of the Hyperledger community is the power of support, um, the strength of the support the fact that you have like-minded individuals from around the world, across industries, vast experiences and background, that we all come together and we get to work on projects that help drive and benefit everyone. The value that it brings is that it brings the, um, the people with common mindset together to drive the adoption of enterprise blockchain, along with you know, education of the community with events, uh, you know, forums like this, you have webinars, so that education helps to understand the various technologies together and work together. It's an opportunity for everyone to contribute, right? And, and to feel like they are known and contributed for. I love to watch the awards this morning of all the key contributors along the way, because I think this is a place unique to, you know, one organization and their mission and mandate, but really where many, you know, needs are coming together and getting met by the community. So I think the people are absolutely what makes impact and being inclusive and bringing as many people in. And I want each project to represent the values of the community that's building it. And it, we, the best way we can have the best projects is to bring more people in and be inclusive of all. Make use of just all the vast experiences. This whole week, you know, we've been hearing about all these production use cases of fabric and how it's really turned, even from the previous forum to this one, about a different, more mature set of stories. There are a lot of opportunities to become members of a lot of different organizations, but Hyperledger is the only organization that offers the quality and caliber of communication, of interaction, of um, opportunity, of amplification, um, you really, you really get your, you really get your money's worth. To be quite honest, There's no lack of energy. Anytime you come and you ask any question to somebody, you are like, "Hey, yeah, I can do this. Hey, yes, this person is willing to work with me." And each people, they, each person, they come from different walks of life, and it's just amazing how different personalities they come together. They try to achieve a result, move towards a common goal. Love that our community consistently challenges what we're doing. Uh, I think that it's good to not have uh, a, a community-led project be spearheaded by specific individuals so that we get a breadth of ideas, a breadth of uh, approaches, and also because it forces us to keep Beso as an open technology. Dynamic and vibrant. There are new features that are being implemented in uh, every other release. There are practical problems that comes across and the good thing is that you have channels to raise those things and within the next roadmap, such kind of features which the community or the implementators are tell, telling across that these are the kind of the challenges that are being geared and put together uh, in a evolution form. So that's why it has matured uh, quite much. We I do think a lot of it is about trust just because uh, the strict governance protocols that are in place really do let people kind of trust that it's not a project that is just good today. It's a project that will be good five, ten years from now, that it's still going to be uh, reliable and able to be, you know, part of uh, the software system that you have. It, it's privileged to be, uh, like, interacting with the Hyperledger Lab, like talking to Daniela, talking to Julian. I think everyone is very open and come to call with you, discuss, give an opportunity. Automobiles, it's being used in airline parts. It's being used in many different industries. What it brings is its openness 
not just to different types of software, but to different stacks, to different ideas, to different technologies, to the entire community on what is the right solution. The biggest thing to me about the Hyperledger Foundation and what it brings to the industry, but when I say the industry, it's being used in music, it's being used in energy, it's being used in healthcare, it's being used in... I think that for, as a government, being a part of the open source community makes a lot of sense um, because it's all about uh, finding the best solution for that particular problem and working collectively for the public good. We're very collaborative and I, I love the, the, the fact that you can put something out there to the world, uh, anybody can use it, anybody can see it, and uh, you know, the open source sort of mentality of, of being open is, to me, uh, one of the great things I think about Hyperledger. Working for three years with uh, Hyperledger Fabric, and it went really smooth. We, we met all the deadlines and so on. So I see that the product is evolving quite quickly. So all this made us uh, think that we should join. Working with the, the Hyperledger community provide you uh, uh, provide those touch points, provide those, uh, bring that, th those, those different organizations, those, those different uh, people with expertise, use case, and need together to ensure that it all comes together. In Hyperledger and in general in the Linux Foundation, we have a full open development model where not only can anyone use the code, but anyone can contribute to the code. Leadership positions in the technical organization are decided entirely on merit. Um, you know, you contribute, you become a maintainer, you work your way up to the technical leadership. So it is really truly open. Uh, and that's something I want to emphasize. I really like this uh, bunch of people <laughs> because uh, they are very friendly. Uh, I think pretty much open-minded. And I like the fact that the, uh, there are different skills uh, working together. There are the place to uh, the actually share the, uh, the code and the implementation and mine. So I think that this is an ideal place to collaborate to the, such a climate change or other uh, social problem to be solved. So I think that uh, many people should come here. This is just a very beautiful um, environment, and it's really very, very tight community. So many of the people were started together, you know, back in 2016, yeah. and at the same time, there is like new blood, new young faces of those who want to come to contribute, to be part of the Hyperledger ecosystem. Yeah. And with more projects joining also and committing their code bases, like we, we really grow, we really um, propel the block agenda forward early days obviously stayed with uh, stayed with the community saw it grow um, over time we've seen projects uh, come in and some projects be sunset so it's a very vibrant uh, community to be involved in and so it was a natural thing to do it second time around it's about being open it's about being global um, and having diverse voices and essentially we're building the next infrastructure in financial services, in healthcare, in food supply, um, in digital identity. And if we don't do it in a global basis together um, and have diverse voices, um, we're going to just build bad old systems again.